Hello again and welcome back to our course on Access 2013 Advanced. In this section we're going to start to look in a little bit of detail at macros. You may well have used macros before but I am pretty much going to start from the basics on this course. We covered some very elementary aspects of macros in our basic to intermediate course. You may or may not have done that course. You may or may not have experience of using macros yourself already. But macros and programming in general are areas of access that many people tend to steer clear of. But I think it's very important that you get a good chance to find out about macros because I really don't think they're as difficult to get to grips with as some people think they are. And even a relatively limited amount of knowledge of macros in Access 2013 can make all the difference in terms of developing Access applications. So I'm going to cover the basics first in this section and then in the subsequent sections we're going to look at some examples of macros, typical kinds of jobs that we get macros to do with access and then I'm also going to set you an exercise on macros as well. So let's begin with a couple of the basics of macros. The first thing to point out to you is that if you've used say the macro recorder in Microsoft Word or Microsoft Excel before you may have a pretty good idea of what macros are and what VBA is. Well between all the components of Microsoft Office there are actually some differences in what macros and VBAs are, the level of development of each of those in the relevant component and it's rather dangerous to think that it's the same in all of the products and in fact in Microsoft Access it's more different than any of the other components and the major difference is that macros and VBA in Microsoft Access are completely different things there is really no overlap between them, they're different languages, they're structured in a different way, you write the code in a different way. There is a very significant overlap in what you can do with macros and VBA. Almost anything you can do in a macro in Access you can do in VBA, although not quite everything. There are still a few things that you can do with macros in Access that you can't do with VBA, whereas VBA is a huge superset in terms of functionality. There are many, many things that you can do in VBA that you can't do in macros. Now we're going to look at VBA later on in the course. For the moment we're just looking at macros. There is no macro recorder in Microsoft Access. You have to handcraft your macros I'm afraid. And one other thing to quickly point out before we get started is that if you've used a much earlier version of Access you may think that the macros are pretty poor really. Well in fact macro functionality was significantly improved in Access 2007 and the macro functionality now I think is pretty good and if you want a relatively quick way of doing quite a few things then I do think that macros offer a very good set of options in Access. The earlier versions of macros in Access 2003 and before I do agree it was pretty poor uh, whereas now it's a pretty good tool as I hope you'll see. Now for some of you, maybe some of you who are experienced Access users, you may still be wondering what the heck macros are. So what we're going to do is to actually first of all produce a straightforward macro. And with this macro, it's not really going to be the most useful macro in the world, but we're going to use it to develop some very useful macros as you will see. So to create a macro, you go to the Create tab. On the right, there's a Macros and Code group. Click on Macro and you come up with the macro editor. By default your macro is called macro1. What a macro is, is a sequence of steps, a sequence of instructions and basically we refer to these as the macro actions. On the right there is an action catalogue and we choose our actions from that catalogue. In the middle section this is really the main area containing the list of available actions. They're categorized. For instance, the first category is data entry operations. If I expand that list, I can do things like delete a record. I can save a record. 
Note as I hover over each of those, I get a screen tip with a description. Second category, data import and export. I can email a database object, I can do a word mail merge. So they're the sorts of actions that we can perform. And you basically build up with a macro a sequence of those actions. You say, I want you to do that, and then I want you to do that, and then I want you to do that. Now, you can control that sequence. You can, for instance, decide whether to take one action depending on the value of something. So, for instance, you might have a question like, is this user an authorized user? If so, do this. If not, do something else. Now the way that you control what happens in the macro is called the program flow and the controls for the program flow are over here. You can also do things like put a comment in. And then right at the bottom of the action catalog in this database if I click on the drop down there I can do things like see a list of the available forms and you'll see the use of this and many of those other features of the Action Catalogue over the next section or two. Now there's a long tradition in the world of computer programming that the first program you ever write says hello world as a message and that's what we're going to do now. Not the most useful thing when you're developing a database but it will demonstrate many of the things you need to know about. So our first action, click on the drop down or select from the action catalog on the right what I'm going to do is just display a message box there's a long list of commands and down there one of the commands is message box and once you select a command you are presented with that command and a list of its arguments the things you need to specify for that command the list of arguments will vary depending on the command that you've selected but a couple of other things to note just before we actually fill in the arguments for this message box command. One of them is that as soon as you do that, another one of those boxes appears underneath it, ready for you to put your second action in. So what Access is doing is assuming that you're going to develop a sequence of actions here. You may only have one, you may have 50. It's entirely up to you and it will vary from macro to macro and also on the right there's a little delete icon there at any stage you can delete one of the commands if you find you don't need it or your requirements change or you just decide you've done it completely wrongly so first of all let's put in our message so we just type in there the message it's gonna be hello world put an exclamation mark now let's look at the other options the other arguments for this command first of all do we want a beep now my sounds are turned off on the PC I'm running this on but you've got a choice you can say yes to a beep no to a beep let's say yes to a beep you won't hear it but if you're working along with me put a beep on and your system will beep at the same time next argument it says what type now you may have noticed in Windows messages that you get an icon in a message that basically indicates what sort of message it is. Is it a warning message? Is it some sort of critical failure or something horrible happened? Or is it just informational? Well I'm going to say that this is just informational. And then the fourth and final argument is the title. What is it going to say in the title bar here? Well let's say as our title our first macro. And that's it that's the content of our first macro. Now in order to actually try this out we can run a macro it's pretty straightforward if you look at the contextual ribbon tab here design under macro tools there are quite a few options here I'll talk about these in just a moment but right over on the left you've got run now when you click on run unfortunately it won't let you run it until you've saved the macro so do you want to save the macro yes I do give it a name I try to give more macros a name that reminds me what their purpose is and although I'm not going to be particularly pernickety about this on this course when I'm working in access databases 
I always give objects name that follow a naming convention which means that the prefix of any item just reminds me what sort of item it is. Now for macros I always precede a macro name with the letters MCR for macro and then when I'm looking at VBA code or macro code or anything else for that matter anywhere within an access database wherever I'm referring to something I can always remember whether it's a form or a table or a macro or whatever I would like you to do something like that as well but some of the databases we're working on haven't followed that convention so I don't want to get too mixed up but anything I create I'm going to follow that naming convention so my macro the first part of the name is going to be MCR and the next part of the name is going to be hello world so that's the name of my macro okay and now it's running our first macro is the title that's what we selected I it's an informational message the message is hello world and by default with a message box you get an OK button so all I need to do is click on OK and that's it my first macro works fine now as your macros get longer and longer you may find that following them becomes quite tricky particularly with all these arguments and sometimes it's easier to follow what's happening in a macro by collapsing it down to just the actions themselves now if you do a collapse all here collapses the whole thing down just says message box there and doesn't have the four boxes afterwards but it does show the arguments in brackets after the word message box so as you'll see in some of the longer macros that we're going to look at in the next section or so you will see the advantages of being able to collapse or expand your macros you can deal with individual actions if you select an individual action you can just collapse the actions for that individual action you also have an option of switching on and off the action catalog you may be selecting actions from the drop down list rather than from the catalog in which case you may not need the catalog and on the left here there is an option to single step through a macro that can be particularly useful if you're having problems with it and also a command that will convert macros to visual basic code again more on visual basic later on in the course so when you've finished working on that macro all you really need to do is to just close it down so click on the close button do you want to save the changes yes and then let me just press the F11 key so that I can see the navigation panel on the left I've now got a macro in the macro section MCR hello world and another way of running it is either to just double click it in which case it runs or I can right click it click on run and you can actually set up the ribbon or the quick access toolbar to enable you to run a macro from either of those so that's it that's our first macro at any time you can just edit the macro by going into design view and let's suppose I wanted to add another action I wanted to do say another message box well if I go into user interface components one of the options there is message box if you just double click message box over on the right there in the action catalog you notice that another one appears after the one you had before put in another message we'll make this type a critical put in a different title do a run as always it says you must save the macro before you run it yes do a save so now it says hello world ok click on ok how are you today critical click on ok so that's the sequence of steps now that's still not particularly useful in the context of developing a database but what we're going to look at in the next section is some much more practical examples of how macros are used in Access 2013 and we're going to look at a very important macro the auto exec macro so please join me for that